guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking apart a toaster. Now one of my teachers was about to get rid of it, but she decided to give it to me instead. So if you're watching this, thank you. Now there's a whole bunch of useful components I could use in here, including a blind metallic thermostat, heating elements, a cord, electromagnet, and some other stuff. Now the toaster itself actually works, but the handle broke off, so you have to use a screwdriver to turn it on. And if you look at my kilowatt meter, you can see it's drawing 760 watts, so it is working. And you can see the heating elements glowing, and you should not touch that because it's very hot. But yeah, and the cancel button works. This is just a really basic toaster. So yeah, we're going to take it apart. Alright, so it's starting to come apart. You can just pull this plastic off. Ooh. That just totally fell apart. These are the polypropylene plastics that I can recycle. And if you turn it around, you can see that's not a bimetallic thermostat, that's a circuit board. Interesting. And then it's stuck to this stainless steel casing, which I want to remove. I don't want to slice my finger on that metal, though. Alright, so there's a few tabs holding the stainless steel to the toaster, so I'll see if I can remove those. Alright, so I removed the outer casing and the crumb tray, and now we just have access to the core of the toaster and the most necessary parts. So how this works is you twist a knob and it will set the temperature or the amount of time that the toaster has to be on for the bread to be cooked. Then you, when you press down the lever, it activates an electromagnet, which holds it down. And then these heating elements, which are nichrome wire, these are wrapped around sheets of mica so that it doesn't catch on fire. And mica is not conductive. So the heating elements will glow. And then after the temperature is reached or the set amount of time has passed, then the electromagnet will deactivate and your toast will be ready. Also, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. But the way the toaster turns on is, uh, here's the circuit board, and this piece moves up and down. So when you move down the handle, you can see there's two contacts. It will move this down, and as you can see, there's a piece of iron here, and the electromagnet holds it down. And then it holds it down for however long the bread needs to cook. And then when it's done, the electromagnet lets go, and then because of the springs, this piece disconnects, and it turns off the toaster. I'm going to start taking apart this metal box just by bending these tabs. So I've taken a lot of stuff out of the toaster. These metal racks, the sides, a spring, the part that connects to the electromagnet, the outer casing, and I just need to, there's some screws on the bottom, so I'm gonna remove all of those. Alright, so here's something I thought was interesting. So most wires have a plastic coating on them, so the wires don't short. But this one, it has a fiberglass coating. And you can tell it's fiberglass because it has these lines. So yeah, it still prevents you from getting shocked and it is very heat resistant. But I'm confused why it's in my vacuum cleaner cord. Alright, so I got all the electronics out and I kept them intact, so I'm going to desolder the wires here. Also, I noticed a thermistor, so this must be using temperature instead of time to control when the bread is being uh, released. Now there's a bunch of different ways that toasters can control temperature. One way is to use, like I said, a basic timer. You can also use a thermistor, bimetallic thermostat, 
Or you can even use a photocell to detect how much infrared is radiating off the bread to tell how warm it is. All right, so the parts I was able to get include a circuit board with an electromagnet on it, some pieces of mica, springs, screws, two heating elements with heating wire on only one side, one heating element with heating water on two sides, or heating wire, and also I got a power cord because clearly I do not have enough of those and just some other pieces of metal and plastic that I can recycle. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and now I have a huge pile of crumbs I need to clean up.